All right, so you've gone to the P drive. You've made a folder, your last name, underscore F17. We know what your last name is, obviously, because it's your last name. F17 means? Fall 17, perfect. Okay, very easy to find this stuff later. When you go to your portfolio class and you're like, oh, I need to find my After Effects stuff, I took that in Fall 17, boom, there's your Fall 17 folder. Uh, make another new folder inside of that folder. And we're going to call this 1900. What's that number mean? It's a class number, right? So now we know exactly which class. All right. So now that we have that, now we're going to go into this organizational stuff that's on the top of that cheat sheet, okay? So we're going to do a um, we're going to be playing around, but we're going to be doing what's called a page transition. So we're going to make a new folder called page transition. And what I recommend you also do is put your name in there too. So I'm going to put Sarcona underscore page transition. So use whatever your last name is underscore page transition. On a PC, does anyone know what happens if I take a folder and move it into a directory with the same exact name of another folder? What happens? Right, it copies over the file. So if everyone in this class has a folder called page transition and everyone tries to turn that folder in, it's gonna start overwriting stuff, okay? Now just trivia, I guess, on a Mac, um, on a PC, it merges the folders together. So if I have two folders with the exact same name but all the files are differently named, it'll merge those two folders together. On a Mac, it deletes that folder and replaces it with the other one. Hey, anyone? Okay, so just be aware of that too. On a PC, their default is set to merge folders. On a Mac, their default is set to overwrite. It literally just deletes the one folder and puts the new folder in there, okay? Um, that can be very tricky between platforms. All right, so now inside of your page transition folder, that's where you're gonna make these folders here. Artwork, audio, movies, output, and reference. Does anyone know the shortcut key for making a new window on Windows machine? Control Shift N. Whoops. Do you want it to still be our last name underscore artwork? Nope. Uh, once we do the main one as that, then all the other folders we can just leave as artwork, audio, movies, output. I'm all about making sure that we're doing things as efficiently as possible. And the least amount of work I can do, the better, okay? So um, just navigation stuff. You guys may be experts at Windows. Some people are not. I want to just make sure you understand navigation because some people are Mac people. Is anyone not a Windows person? Okay, perfect. Um, then this is for you. All right, so up here at the top, these are all of the different areas that um, you can travel to. So if I want to go back to the previous folder, the hotkey is just the backspace button on your keyboard or this back button, or I can just click right on the name, okay? So if I just click right on that 1900, it takes me right back to where my main folder is. So this folder structure we're going to use for every single project that we do, right? So there's no sense in us for the next project making a brand new one, typing in all that information again. Then for the next project, making another brand new one and typing in all that information again. So we're gonna make a template folder of this, okay? So we're gonna hold down the control key and just drag this main folder into that same folder, okay? So I just hold control and I just drug this folder down here and it just makes a copy of it. If you get stuck, raise your hand. Ask a neighbor, ask me. Everyone's cool so far? Awesome. So we don't want to say Sarcona Page Transition Copy because that's a stupid name. So we will just call this Sarcona underscore template. And if we capitalize the word template, then it seems a little bit more obvious of what it is. Okay, so I just capitalize the entire thing. Okay, so next time we do a project, our next assignment, which will be the title sequence, we're just going to copy that template folder and rename that last part of it title. Okay, that way it'll say sarcona underscore title. All the folders are still inside. Okay, look for these little hacks along the way 
it'll just make your work a lot easier to do. Cool. All right, so now we can close that folder. All right. When we open up After Effects for the first time today, or maybe the 30th time in a couple weeks from now, uh, we may find that our After Effects looks different than we expected, okay? In all Adobe applications, there are preferences that get set. If the person last night came in and they really effed up After Effects' interface and you're like freaking out, I don't know what to do, we want to be able to reset it. These ones are a clean install, nobody should have touched them but I want you to at least see how this happens. So if you have After Effects open, close After Effects down so you can see how this works, okay? So you go and search for After Effects, and this is, again, fast ways to do stuff. The slow way, I click on the Windows icon, like I'm a grandma, and I go over here to the slider bar, and I scroll down until I find After Effects. It's really slow right, and I go, I don't see it, Jimmy, and then I look up top. I still don't see it. I say, Grandma, it's alphabetical. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. And then you find it. Holy cow. On your computers, there's a Windows key, right? Even on a Mac, there's like a little spotlight or something. There's a button on the top. You click that, and then you just start typing After Effects, okay? And the computers are so smart that if you just type in After, it kind of knows that that's the only After Effects thing you want, right? So that's how we get to see After Effects. Then we want to hold... Control, Alt, and Shift at the same time as we click it. Um, yes. And then what's going to happen here? There we go. What's going to happen here is that After Effects should say, do you want to delete your preferences upon booting up? Okay, as long as you've held down the Control, Alt, and Shift. When it does, you would just say yes. Okay, mine, for whatever reason, just automatically did it. Yours too? Okay. Sometimes it will automatically do it. It's just silly sometimes. Um, you may get messages like this that pop up. It's basically saying your disk cache folder may be full or nearing its uh, available space. You can just hit never again or once per session. It doesn't matter. Okay. If you're constantly rebooting After Effects, yeah, just do um, never again. All right. So now open up your After Effects that way if you haven't. Um, so the cool thing is we've kind of moved past a lot of the earlier stuff and now we're doing things digitally, right? So in After Effects, we don't have to do frame by frame by frame animations. We could, we don't have to. What we can do is called um, keyframe animation. We set a start point here, we set an end point there, and After Effects will help blend between those two points, okay? And we can help control how it does that too, all right? So we're gonna get into this, set up some keyframes, and then we'll see what we can do with it, all right? So here is our After Effects interface. I have my pointer stick. Um, up here on the left side, this is like where we would import stuff, okay? So before we get too far, see how there's an internal project organization on your card? We're gonna make those folders, okay? So in the bottom of that window, you'll see there's a tiny folder icon right down there. You're going to click the tiny folder icon right there, and you're going to call, uh, give it one of those names. So we'll call that composition. And don't worry about them nesting inside each other. Just create the folders, and we'll move them out after. All right, once you get them typed in there, yours may look like mine. You can see how they're all nested inside each other just because I clicked the new and then added it, new and added it. You can just drag the bottomest folder down here and it'll automatically just pull it out. Okay? Ideally, you want it to be straight, just like this. 
when you create a bigger project, we're probably not going to get to the point where we have some enormous project in this class. When you get into compositing and 2D animatics or advanced After Effects, um, you may have bigger projects that need that. But for this class, these are the main folders we're going to be using. Inside each one of those folders for bigger projects, you could have stuff organized even further. Like if we're doing um, an Angry Birds animation, um, we would have, let's say we had 10 characters. Inside of our artwork folder, we would have each one of those characters in a separate folder. That way it stays nice and organized inside that too. Okay, And you'll kind of see that as we go. Alright, so just like everything else, this is a nice template to start off with. Every project we do is going to have this structure, right? So let's save this to our template folder. So let's go to File, Save As. And you'll see there's like a bunch of options under Save As. Just do the regular Save As. Okay. And if you're, again, not comfortable with PCs, uh, you find in the left column you'll see this PC. And then you can click on the P drive go into your folder, go into 1900, go into the template folder, and then right inside this main area, that's where I save my project. So I'm just going to call this Sarcona underscore template project. Okay. You don't need to do this next step. I'm just going to show you what happened when we did that. Inside my template folder, I have a project called Sarcona underscore template project. Okay, that's all we did. You'll see that it's an AEP file. Obviously, that's going to be important so that as you're looking for what is my actual After Effects project file, AEP stands for After Effects project file. Okay. All right, so that's our template one. Now let's save it for page transitions. So we go back to um, save as. What was the hotkey? Anyone catch it? Control Shift S. Perfect. Control Shift S. And then we just drop it into our page transitions and just call it your last name underscore page transitions. All right, so that side here, this little box, that's where we're going to be importing stuff. So when we um, make a beautiful picture and we want to bring it into After Effects, that's where we're going to bring it into it. When we have a piece of audio, that's where we bring it into there. When we make an animation or a movie, that's where we bring that in there. Okay? So that's the import project window. Um, this will be similar to if you've used Premiere or Final Cut, the bin, right, that you would separate or set up. Um, this area right here in the center this is our viewer, okay? So this is whatever we're doing, our animation, that's going to be our screen that we're going to be able to see what's actually happening to our stuff. Um, you'll notice at the top there's a composition and a flow chart. You may not have the flow chart. It doesn't look like you do, or do you? No? Okay. You may not have a flow chart in yours. I have it on mine for whatever reason it shows up on mine. We'll never, ever, ever pretty much ever use the flow chart. We may touch on it once, but that's about it. Um, over here on the right side are just your palettes. If you've used Adobe products before, you're familiar with these little uh, pull-out windows that you can find stuff, effects, preview, whatever. Okay, we'll get into what those are a little bit later. Um, up at the top, obviously, we have our menu bar. And then right under the menu bar, these are our common tools. So just like on our sheet here, these tools along the top are those tools. So the more we can uh, familiarize ourselves with that, the easier it's going to be. The big one is going to be down here. That's our timeline. Most of our work will be done inside the timeline. Because this is an animation package, we'll be manipulating stuff constantly in the timeline. Okay. So right now, there is nothing in our file. If you open a brand new uh, Photoshop file, and you went to file new, at least you would have a canvas you can start working on. We have nothing right now. All we have are some empty folders. So every time that we want to make a new project, we go to the composition and we make a new composition. Okay. Now I use those words interchangeably, project and composition. They're two completely different things. The project is everything inside of this area. So it's all these folders. Anything I would bring in, 
um, any movies or in, sounds or whatever, that's part of my project. My composition is just what video am I currently looking at, okay? It might not make sense now, but it will. All right, so composition, new composition. So go there. You can also hit Control N. That's the hotkey for comp new composition. Now, if you look at your cheat sheet, do you see anything that says a resolution on here? Where's the resolution listed? 960 by 540. So, um, in video, do you think we care about pic uh, dots per inch or pixels per inch? What? No. The only one who's care about that is if you're printing it, right? Because that's a real world dimension is an inch. An inch on this screen is irrelevant, right? So we only care about actual pixel count. How many pixels are going across this way? How many pixels are going across that way? So if you watch a movie at the theater, they have ridiculous resolutions so that you can see super crystal clear stuff. We can't work like that because these computers can't handle it and our files would take forever to work on. So what we do is we work at half of HD, okay? So 1920 by 1080 is HD. We work at half that and that's a pretty good resolution to go with. So where it says width, we're going to type in 960. Okay. Now we're going to type in 540 for the height, but we may have to click this lock off. Okay. The lock is the same thing you would see in other areas where it locks the width and height together. So uncheck that little lock button on the right of it and then type in 540. Okay. So we should see 960 by 540 there. And not to throw too much at you, but if you're using the numbers on the top of your keyboard, avoid using those. Get used to using the keypad. It's like a thousand times quicker. All right, 960 by 540. Good, no complaints, cool. Um, we have pixel aspect ratio. So um, a long time ago, I used to be a projectionist at a movie theater. It was called Star Theater. You probably don't even ever heard of Star Theaters, but yes, I was. Um, and they used to have two different kinds of film. One was like a regular film, and the other one was an anamorphic film, where the film was actually like squished, and when it projected, it would actually stretch it back out, okay? So in some cases, you would want pixels to not be square, so they were like squished in. We don't want that. Everything we're gonna do in this class is gonna be square pixels, okay? So we can leave it at square pixels. We also have a frame rate. Um, depending on which media source you're going to, you're gonna have different frame rates. So if you're doing something for a game, you might be at or for the web, you might be at like 15 frames a second. Or for a game, you might be at 15. Or for a movie, you might be at 24 or 30 or 60 or whatever, okay? This class, we're gonna stay at 30. It's a good middle ground. It gives us enough frames to actually do stuff with. If I only have five frames for each second, that's very few frames to actually get my point across. If I have 24, that's pretty good. At 30, we have a good amount of it, okay? So 30 frames per second. Okay, so always these settings, 960, 540, square pixels, 30 frames a second. Yes, ma'am. Um, drop frame is, in some cases, there will be a 29.97. So there's not actually going to be a full frame at that point. So what it does, it drops a frame every second or something. Okay. Um, 30 is just a good, nice number to use, especially if you go into another application, you don't have to worry about translating it. Um, After Effects is a good animation software, but we could actually go into Maya or Cinema 4D and do animations and bring them in there. If we keep it at 30, it's a nice consistent number. You can tweak things later um, a little bit. Um, our resolution, we're gonna leave at full right now, okay? Um, speed is gonna be an issue. Our first couple assignments, you're not gonna see it. When we get to maybe the third, fourth, or fifth assignment, you're gonna to start to see that these computers are gonna to start to run super slow, okay? Um, for now, full resolution is perfect. We have a start time code, which is when do you want your movie to start? Zero is typically a good spot to start, so we leave everything at zero. And then our duration is how long we want these to be, okay? So just as a, uh, a little guessing game, what do you think that the first set of zeros on the right means? frames, right? Because we have 30 frames per second, so we have to be able to count those frames. So the first one is frames, 
the next one, then, and then hours, right? I've never worked on an hour long After Effects project. Um, so for these projects, um, initially we're going to be doing, um, let's do four seconds or three seconds. We'll do three seconds, okay? So we do three seconds. So you don't have to, this is what everyone, most people do, is they try to get in here to the seconds area and then they try to erase that and then type in three. Just type in three zero zero. That means three seconds, zero frames. You have to have two zeros, otherwise I think it's just 30 frames. Okay? So just three zero zero is three seconds. You can verify it right here where it says three seconds. And then we would hit okay. All right, so now we have a three second long composition. We have nothing in there yet, we have a three second long composition. We want to verify that we have a three second long composition. So if you look on your timeline, we got a new thing now, which is actual like time. Over here on the far left where this little blue ticker is, um, we can't see what that number is. Most likely it's zero because we started off at zero. On the far right, you'll see a three colon zero zero. Do you see a three colon zero zero? Anyone not see a three colon zero zero? All right, so now let's get something inside this box so that we can actually animate something, okay? There's two things that we can do inside of After Effects that will just create something. One of them is called a solid, all right? So we're gonna go and create a solid. Layer new solid is how you can get to new solid okay look at your hockey sheet look at the area right where did I put it uh, where did I put <laughs> create new solid what's the hockey for it control y or if you're on a Mac command y right so hit control y and a solid is that. It's just a solid colored block. That's all it is. Okay, nothing fancy. A uh, couple things to pay attention to. The name of it. Right now it's called Pale Gray Royal Blue Solid 1. Why is mine called that? That's what color it is, right? So, if, yeah, it just found whatever color is closest to it somehow, and it just calls it that, okay? So if I have, have 10 new solids, and they're all called... Pay gray, real, blue, solid, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. It's be very difficult to figure out what's going on. So at some point, we want to name stuff. Right now, we're not going to worry about it too much. We'll give it a name, but we don't really care what it's for at this point. Okay? So just call it um, Start Solid. Starter Solid. That's a better name. Starter Solid. And the idea with it is it has a name. Right, we've given it a name, we recognize what it's going to be. When we make a new one, it's not going to be called Starter Solid 2, it'll just be called whatever that name was it just had up there. Uh, notice the resolution 960 by 540. It automatically reads what our composition size is and fits it to that. If it didn't, we could say make comp size, that's what that button's for. Um, we could also make it a different size. Sometimes you may want a composition or a layer to be bigger or a solid to be bigger than it currently is or smaller. Uh, we're dealing with pixels. I don't even know why they have inches on there. It doesn't make sense. Um, and then we have square pixels. Okay. We also have down here a color. So click on the color swatch and pick a medium color. Okay. Nothing like crazy bright like that red. It's too early for that red. I want to go something a little bit more mellow. There we go. Maybe it's, we'll go with the yellow. I'm going with yellow. You can go whatever color you want with. There we go. Okay, so you have your color picked. We don't need to spend hours doing it. Um, hit OK, and then hit OK. All right, so now we have our solid with our color. Now, if we wanted to change the solid's properties, control Y was the hotkey to get to the solid, right? To make a new one. Easy hotkey to remember, control shift Y. 
will let us change the color or the settings of our solid. Okay? So control Y to make a new solid, control shift Y to change the settings of our solid if we need to. Now once we created that, it made a new item on our timeline. Okay? In order to animate something, you have to have something to animate. Right? I can't just animate nothing. There has to be something there. So now that we have our starter solid, we get this. This little bar that goes across is where that solid is on our timeline. Okay? If we're watching a movie, we're watching Toy Story, and the first five minutes of the movie, Buzz is not in Toy Story. So Buzz would not be on our timeline here until he shows up. Okay? That makes sense, right? Okay. Um, so that's what this is. Now if we grab the far left of it, so if you see where my little cursor is, there's two double arrows there. If I click and drag that, I can shrink where that is. On either side of this, I can shrink where that layer is going to be. Okay? So right now, if I were to hit the play button, I would see nothing, 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 and then my solid, and then nothing again. Okay? What do you think the play button is in After Effects? Spacebar, Space right? You've used that before in VLC or QuickTime or Windows Media Player, maybe? Yeah? Um, I just didn't know if people use Windows Media Player. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> so hit the spacebar. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> So that's what we see. Okay, if you didn't adjust your time, you're not going to see anything because yours is showing the entire time, but mine is in that just that center section. Okay? Now, why is this important? Because when people get into animating stuff, their their little ticker here, watch this little blue ticker when I hit play. It stays in the same spot, but that little red line is going back and forth. And when I hit the stop button, that blue ticker updates. Okay, so even though we can't see that blue ticker moving, that's what's updating our timeline. So what people try to do is they say, I can't see my salad. I can't see my salad. I don't see it here. I say, well, of course you don't see it here because your blue ticker is over there. That little ticker needs to be in the spot where you can see it. Okay? So we can grab that little blue ticker and we can move it wherever we want to. We don't have to just hit play and then wait for it to get on top of there. All right, so now I want to reset my solid so that it's back to where it was. So I'm going to move my blue ticker all the way to the beginning, okay? Remember hotkeys? So there's a hotkey that will take my blue ticker all the way to the beginning of my animation. What do you think that is? Home, right? So hit home. Now I want to take this layer and I want to bring that left side all the way here. Now on here, there's nothing that says grab that layer and bring that starting point all the way there, but it does say move the in point, or no, not move, uh, trim the in point of selected layer. Okay, you see where it says trim the in point? Okay, alt and left bracket. Okay, so alt and left bracket will pop the starting point to right there. Now if I hit end, and I do Alt and right bracket, it'll move the end point to there. Okay? That's a lot more accurate and a lot quicker than trying to do it the other way. Especially when we get into an animation that is not just three seconds. Okay? Sometimes we may want to step an animation. We have one layer here, one layer here, one layer here, one right after the other. And instead of me trying to slide the, the this thing the in point to line up perfectly, it makes more sense just to say, hey, you're gonna end here, and then go to my next one and say, you're gonna start there, boom, okay? Now, there is a difference between adjusting the trim points, the size of this, or the length of this composition, or the um, solid, versus moving the entire thing. If I'm in the middle of this and I grab it, it's definitely starting at a later point, but the end of this has actually gone off our composition, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, cool. So let's get to animating because just staring at this is kind of boring, right? So we want to animate the position of this thing, all right? Um, let's do scale. Scale is like one of the easier ones, all right? So on our list up here of layer properties, which one is scale? S. Okay, so I'm going to hit S. 
and you'll see that scale pops up, right? So you can see in your timeline, underneath that layer, starter solid, it says scale, right? Okay. There's a little stopwatch next to it. That's what that thing is. Um, has anyone done any animating in software packages before? 3D, 2D? Okay. So in some software packages like After Effects, they have a thing called auto key, where basically you say, I want to animate this property, and whenever you change it, it'll automatically set a key. Okay. They have other software packages where you set up a keyframe and then you set up another keyframe, and then you set up another keyframe. So you have to actually tell it every single time you want to animate a property. After Effects is auto key. So once we click this stopwatch, we're saying start setting keyframes on this. Okay? And that means that anytime I change it in my entire timeline, it will change the scale of, the, of that item. So click this, uh, well make sure first, our ticker is at the very beginning. So make sure you hit home to get to the very beginning and then click the stopwatch for scale. Okay, what happened on our timeline? It got a diamond, right? <laughs> What's the difference? The difference is, and this is where it gets fun, right? Is that that keyframe is simply a marker. How we get from one keyframe to another can be changed by changing that diamond into a dot. Okay, so that's where we have to pay attention to it because how it animates is very dependent on that shape right there. All right, so for now it's going to be diamonds. Eventually it'll be dots and other stuff. All right, so we said at the very beginning of this, we want this to be 100%. 100% is 100% of its size. We started off at 960 by 540. It's 960 by 540. So now we have to set an end point, right? So we're saying at zero, look like this. And then let's say at one second, we want it to look like something different. So we're gonna go to one second. So I'm gonna drag my little blue ticker over to one second. You'll see you're able to get pretty close to it and get it to that area. Now what I wanna do is I wanna change the value of that scale, okay? So you have seen Photoshop and Illustrator before. You can grab these little boxes here in the corner and you can drag it down. Okay, I'm going to hold shift so that it maintains um, proportions and I'm going to drag it right to there. Okay, so grab the little corner. Make sure you grab the corner first and then hold shift. If you start, if you hold shift and then click on it, it deselects it. Okay. Right, well mine has disappeared because I put mine all the way at zero, so mine is gone. All right. Um, so that's one way to do it. So we can drag on those corners and bring it in and make it super tiny. Yes, ma'am. These two? Yeah. Yes, there is. So the question is, what is the difference between these two numbers? Any guesses? There's two 100%s here. Why are there two 100%s there? What was that? The height and the width. Exactly. Okay. So the width of our item and the height of our item are two different numbers. X and Y. I'm going to throw math at you this early in the morning. Okay. X is going across and then Y is going up and down. That's all we need to know. <laughs> okay. Now when we get into 3D, there will be a Z, and that's going to go like towards the camera or away from the camera. That'll be something later on. All right, but certain properties will have an X and a Y. They will have a this direction and a that a direction, okay? Um, awesome. So maybe we want to animate something else. So let's create, um, well, let's create another new solid, okay? So how do we create a new solid? Control Y. This is orange. I would consider that more of a yellow, whatever. All right. So I'm going to pick a new color. Let's go with blue. And then I will give this a new name. Second salad. And then hit OK. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, we could, we could scale it this way, we can scale it that way, we can move things in just one direction. Uh, we can't, until we get to 3D, we can't rotate like backwards. We can only rotate it, like facing the camera. So only like 2D. Right, 2D right now. Eventually we'll get into the 3D stuff. Okay, that's the funner stuff. <laughs> All right, so we created a new solid, and then what happened to our old solid? It's underneath it. It's just underneath the thing. Right, okay. So After Effects is a layering program, so that means that if we have one layer and another layer and another layer, that things do stack on top of each other. So remember when I said you can change the size of your layer? That's why you may want to do that, okay? Now, we don't want to do that. What we're going to do is just, this is a playing around exercise. So... I have my one box I want to shrink in, then I'm going to have this box scoot in from the side, okay? So my animation is this scaling happens first, the second thing happens, the box slides in from the side. So I really don't need that box anywhere around until after the box is scaled down. Does that make sense? Okay. So where does the box scale down? One second, right? So if I move my time clicker to one second, and then I move this layer to not start until then, I should be good. I should see my layer scale down, and then that box right now will just pop in. Okay, so how do I get that whole layer just to slide over? Alt bracket, alt left bracket. Okay. So if I were just to hit the home key again, you'll see this thing scale down and boop, it pops in. Awesome, okay. So now that I know that it's doing what I wanted it to do, as far as time goes, um, I need to animate this thing sliding into frame, okay? So I'm gonna hit what key to adjust position? P, thank you. So S is scale, P is position. So far, so good, okay? Um, my starting point for this is not going to be right here. That'll be my ending point, right? Because I want this to be off screen and then slide onto the center of the screen, okay? So it'll be basically black on the screen and this blue box, purplish bluish box will just kind of slide in. So I'm actually gonna go to two seconds and then click my stopwatch. Okay, I reason I went to two is because that's when I want this blue box to be right there. Try not to think, I think people complicate the uh, animation process. At one second, I want the blue box to be off screen. At two seconds, I want it to be on screen. So at two seconds, I put a keyframe to be on screen. At one second, Let's move my ticker back. I'm just going to move it off screen. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Okay, so now we have our box shrinking. We have our other box sliding into frame. It's amazing. So now we've played with position. We've played with scale. Um, next one we're going to play with is rotation. Okay. So rotation, so what do we need for rotation? A new solid. We could do it on another one of these. We could animate position and scale and rotation on one solid, but just for simplicity, let's make a brand new one. So we hit control Y. We pick a brand new color. Go with green today. All right, at what point do I need green to come in? Two seconds. two seconds. So I move my blue ticker to two seconds. And then instead of hitting the alt left bracket, just hit the left bracket. Okay. Now the reason for doing just the left bracket is alt left bracket will actually cut it. Okay. So if I had a video that I brought in of a monkey playing the drums and I wanted the entire clip, 
I would not want to hit alt left bracket because it would cut off the intro part of that. If I hit left bracket, it just moves the entire clip down, okay? All right, so now we want to animate rotate. Now rotate is one that you're really gonna see the effects of this other thing that I want to show. All right, so what's the hotkey for rotate? R, bunch of pirates. Um, notice how position has two values, right? We have an X and a Y. Um, the 480 and 270, just as a, another math feature, I guess, today, our composition is 960 by 540. So if we cut 960 in half, we get 480. We cut 540 in half, we get 270. So that marker here is the center of that layer. Okay, that's what that means. For rotation, we only have, we have two numbers, but they mean different things. The left number means revolutions, right? What's the difference between a revolution and a rotation? Any guesses? A full turn, right? So the Earth revolves around the sun, right? But the Earth also rotates on its axis. So the Earth is rotating so many degrees and it's revolving around the sun, right? So you can think of it like that. So when we do a, a revolution, it's 360 degrees. So if I said I have a tire I want to spin five times, I don't have to figure out what five times 360 is. I could just type in five, okay? So when we play with this, for now, don't touch this left number. We're only gonna play with the right number, okay? So don't touch yours yet. Watch what happens when I rotate. Do you see where it's rotating from? The center. And that's gonna be boring because I wanna start off with basically like this thing off screen and then rotating into screen, right? That would be kind of cool just to have it go like and fall into the screen. So if you look at your hotkeys up here, there's one called the pan behind anchor point tool. Okay, it's a ridiculous name pan behind, but it means the anchor point. And the anchor point is the center of our item. Okay, it's where it's gonna be pivoting from. So instead of it pivoting in this case, from the center of that solid, I want to pivot it from the corner. That way I can control how it's going to come into the screen a little bit nicer, right? That makes sense, okay? So this little guy right here in the center, that's the pivot point. That's where it's spinning around. So I'm going to hit Y to get to my anchor point. And then I'm going to drag this little anchor point to this corner over here. Now to get it to accurately snap to the corner, I hold control as I drag. So, all right, so now that we have that, <clears throat> let's animate rotate. So we're at two seconds, which is where we want rotate to be. Um, what do we do? Walk me through it. Yep, so let's go to three seconds and hit our stopwatch, right? All right, so now we have our ending point. That's where we want this to be at the end. Now what do we do? Yep. We don't click the stopwatch again. Whenever we animate, and this is gonna throw you off at least the first assignment-ish, only click the stopwatch once, okay? Because that's, that's setting up your keyframe to say anytime I change it, it'll automatically create a keyframe, okay? If I did click it, it'll get rid of that other keyframe. Okay. You have to click it right, and there you do. Yep, all we have to do is change it. So we just go to the degrees, and we rotate it out. Okay, so you don't have to go exactly to 90, which would be like vertical. You can go a little bit further past it. And then we hit play. All right, besides this looking like our first time we've been in After Effects, what looks horrible about this? What was that? Yeah, just moving boxes. <laughs> but is there... It needs motion blur, exactly, we need motion blur. We need some more speed, that's another thing. Um, one thing that bothers me about any time we do a rotation is this. Like... Yeah, the edge of that box in the top, I want that to be like a big clapper just like slamming down. So 
I'm going to hit S on that one. So I'm going to go to where I can see the edge of the box. And I'm going to hit S on that layer. And then I'm just going to make it bigger. And if you notice, nothing bad happens to my rotation. It just makes that box bigger. Okay? Yours may do it. It doesn't matter. It's just, just a point of interest. Okay, um, so this is, remember we said the diamonds are, are, they mean something, right? The diamond keyframes mean something, circles would mean something. There's another one that's kind of weird that would mean something. <clears throat> um, when I clicked on my third solid here, the one that rotates in, and then I hit the S key, do you see that my keyframes are now gone from my timeline? Like they were there a second ago, but now they're not. So why aren't they there? Any guesses? It's a different effect, right? So I'm looking at scale now. I'm not looking at rotate, okay? So you may have a layer that has a thousand keyframes, but it's only gonna show you the keyframes for what you're currently looking at, all right? So I'm currently looking at scale. Scale doesn't have any keyframes for this layer, so it's only showing me scale stuff. If I wanna see rotates again, I would hit R and then I'd be able to see rotates keyframes again. Mm -hmm. There is. So if I want to see two things at once or three or four, I hit shift and I would click the next one. So if I hit shift S, shift P, I can see the other keyframes in there too. Okay. So you can actually have multiple things there. And if you look here, if I just hit, um, I hit U that hides them and shows them. There's a little uh, triangle on the far left side of each layer. That triangle is just like you would see in your browser. It allows you to expand layers. So if I were just to click it, I could expand that layer down, expand this layer down, and now I can see all of those properties that I could animate, okay? By default, your layer only has these five that we can animate, that's it, okay? We can add other stuff to it, but by default, that's how they start off. All right. Um, if I want to see what is keyframed, tomorrow I come in or, or Monday I come in, I'm not sure what I keyframed on this layer. And instead of going through and trying to hit P, S, R, T, whatever, I can just hit the letter U. And U shows you anything that's keyframed on that layer. Okay. What's neat about that is you may have keyframes on this item, this item, and this item, and you just want to see where they're all at so you can time them out. I may want something to uh, scale up and change opacity at the same time. I may want something to rotate into frame and scale out at the same time, okay? So you may want to tie things together and you want to see those specific items. So U is a great one and it is on your sheet there. Um, if you do W, not W, but two U's, it will show you anything that's been modified, okay? So if I've modified something, it'll show it to me. So in this case, I've modified the scale, the position, and the anchor point, um, so it updates that, okay? Now you may say to yourself, well, hold on, you didn't adjust any position on this um, rotation one. All we did was move the anchor point. Well, when you move the anchor point, it also moves the position, okay? And just to show you that, you don't have to do this part. I'm just gonna show you real quick that if I go to my anchor point tool, and I start to move this, watch these two numbers here, okay? Do you see how those two numbers are moving? So what happens is, and this is kind of like a weird thing to even process what's happening, but if I go to just the anchor point and I say I want the anchor point to be at zero and zero, do you see how it moves the anchor point to that corner, that top left corner of my box? Well, to get it back to that top corner up here, I have to then move this box all the way up to the top. So that's why it does move both of those values because it has to move the anchor point and position in order for everything to work out. Now why that's going to be important is if I decided that I wanted to animate an object moving across the screen and then I decide, oh, I'm going to change the anchor point, now my keyframes are going to get messed up. Okay. So always do your anchor point at the very beginning if you can so that you don't screw up stuff later down the line. All right. And if you do, it's not going to be a huge deal. You just undo stuff and redo it. Um, another thing that um, 
happen to people as they were working is they double click layers, okay? So this has a specific purpose, but if I double click any one of these layers, watch what happens up here, okay? Let me go to that there, okay. Now I'm gonna double click this layer. Okay, so there was a flicker, and then my screen was back to normal, right? No. So what happens is I'm actually inside that layer now, all right? Um, you're familiar with masks, like clipping masks, or layer masks, or vector masks, whatever. This is where I could draw a mask inside of After Effects. That's what this, this is area is for. So this is its own little timeline down here. At the very top, you'll see it says layer second solid. Um, I want to make sure that I uncheck that because if I slide this here, I don't see anything happening. It looks like my animation is broken. It looks like my animation is totally gone. But what I'm doing is I'm just seeing that one solid. Okay? So I'm just going to uncheck that. I can turn off my flowchart too. And now I'm back to my composition. I'm back to being able to see that animation. All right. So you again. There we go. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of our keyframes. So I'm going to make sure that I can see them all. So I've grabbed all three of my layers. I hit U, and that hides everything. And I hit U one more time, and that shows all the keyframes. All right. And then we're going to grab all the keyframes. So you can just grab from down here, like marking down here, and just make a big box around all of them. Okay, so just draw a marquee box starting underneath it to select all those keyframes. Now this one has a hotkey. I'm not going to use the hotkey because my hotkey will turn off my recording of my video. The hotkey is F9. Okay, so you guys can hit F9 once all your keyframes are selected. You could also manually grab each keyframe and hit F9 if that's easier for you, at least initially. Um, I'm going to right click on the keyframe, <clears throat> go to Keyframe Assistant, and say Easy Ease. The function 9 at the very top. Uh, that should work on your Mac, but you may have to hit. Are you on your Mac? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, just hit F9 at the top row. Okay, now if you hit play, do you notice anything different about your animation? It's a little subtle, right? We don't have a lot of time, or we don't have a, a enough speed, but we are speeding up. All right, so before we had the little diamond thing, this is how our stuff was animating. It was going from point A to point B. That's what it was doing. And you can see it's a straight line, right? Okay. So imagine you're in your car, and instead of accelerating to 50 miles an hour and then decelerating, you're just like at 50 the entire time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you right click right on the keyframe itself, then you can get to that keyframe assistant. All right, so this is the diamond one. So when you look at the little diamond thing, That's what that one is, okay? Now, these ones are kind of like two triangles uh, upside down. So let me just draw two triangles upside down real quick. There we go, and then we'll copy this one, then we'll rotate it around. That's kind of the icon for the other one, minus the unlined upness of it. Make that a little bit thicker. Okay. So the other one, this is what the other one is doing. Is it's taking this line that's like this, and it gives it a little bit of smoothness at the beginning. Let me just draw it out. So it goes like this, and like that. Okay, so that's what the other one does, is it takes the start of it and it starts it off really slow. And then it speeds it up, and then at the end it slows it down. 
So it's easing into the movement and easing out of the movement. Okay? So when you look at these kinds of, of things, initially, it's going to be very confusing. We're going to get into actually manipulating these kinds of things. Because what I want to do, eventually, is take this curve that's kind of nice and smooth, and I want to really exaggerate it. I want to basically pull it like that. Okay? And what this is going to give me is something that is very slow at the beginning because it doesn't change vertically a lot to super quick to very slow. Okay? And that's what's going to help our stuff. Now we're going to be looking at these kinds of things throughout to make our animations more dynamic and more pleasant to look at. Okay? But it's important to know what we're trying to do with this. The steeper it is, this way or this way or this way or whatever, the faster it's going to go. The flatter it is, the slower it's going to go. Okay? So whenever you see an area that's flat, like this first part, that by default you should just say that's going to go slow. This is going to go slow. When you see something that's steep, that's going to go fast. Okay? So we're not going to do this on this one, we're going to do another one. But I want you to see it on mine. Okay? So I'm going to take this composition and I'm just going to duplicate it. Oops, I don't want to do that. I want to duplicate it. There we go. And I'm going to manipulate this one. I'm going to say keyframes, scale. There we go. There's my easy ease. It doesn't matter which direction it's going. You can see this one goes down. The other one I drew went up. That doesn't matter. The idea here is when it's flat, it's going to go slow. When it's slanted, slanted, it's going to go fast. So I'm going to take this and manipulate it. All right. So now let's look at it. Okay, now let's go back to the original. And I'm going to take all my original ones and just put them back to their default state. Okay, so look at how boring the original one is. Now look at how much more exciting this one is. Do you see the difference? right you see how one there's a change in speed that change in speed makes it more appealing that static boop 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 very robotic very ugly looking so we want to have that ease in and ease out um, and even to this state we've accelerated it even further now when I looked at this here we initially saw this which is um, a value graph After Effects has two things we'll get into it a little bit more um, for starters, we start off with the speed graph, which is like 10 times easier to manipulate for beginners. But it's doing the exact same thing. I'm just changing where the speed happens. And then if we went in here, someone mentioned motion blur before. If I turn on motion blur, we can see there's definitely even more a little bit interesting look to it okay all right so uh, let me delete comp 2 inside here I don't need comp 2 um, notice how in my organization up here that my comp 1 my first composition somehow ended up inside my audio folder uh, where do you think that should go composition so let's drop that into composition okay so I just drag it. So all you have to do is drag that into your composition. And I'm also going to right click and rename it. And say first go at animating. Spam. So we make our new comp. Make our new layer. Hit P for position. And then we're going to animate it coming into the screen. Now, you saw how fast that came in in the original one, right? One second, one. And it's in there. 
If I take my keyframes and I push them closer together, will my animation move faster or slower? Faster, right? Because they're closer together. We want to have this thing happen pretty quick. So instead of one whole second, we're gonna go to 10 frames, okay? So if you look at your time slider, you should see a 10F, that means 10 frames. So let's go to 10F and set a, uh, turn our stopwatch on. Okay, so now we've said we want to set keyframes on position. We have a little diamond inside there, right? Okay, now we go back to zero and we slide it off screen. Now, if you didn't do this step in the previous one, watch how I slide this off screen. Do you think I want it to slide in some weird diagonal way? Probably not, not in this case anyway. I want it to either come straight across or from above and slap down. You get to pick the direction. But how do I make sure that it is either up and down perfect or left and right perfect? Shift, right? So I'm actually gonna go above. I haven't done that one in a while. Okay, and because we're going off screen with this, you can go a little bit further. Don't go crazy further, but you can go a little bit further than the boundaries of that box. If you need to zoom in and out, your scroll wheel on the mouse is usually the easiest way to do that. Okay, and then you can hit play and just make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. All right, so I don't like to have to wait until this gets all the way done before I see it again. That's like two seconds and 20 frames of time that I'm losing on my life every time I watch this. So I'm gonna go to about 25-ish um, frames, and I'm gonna do what's called setting my work area, okay? If I wanna focus my animation viewing in this one spot, um, I don't want to uh, waste all this extra time. So I'm gonna set my work area to just this one, one spot. So on your hotkey list, you'll see in the timeline area that says set beginning of work area, set end of work area. The beginning and end right now are at the beginning of our timeline and the end of our timeline. So we should just need to set the end of our timeline or end of our work area. So all we have to do is hit what key? N. N, okay? So if you have your ticker at 25, you hit N, do you see how it kind of changed something on your screen? Okay. This little blue slider here, right? The little blue ticker that we've been moving, that adjusts where our time is. But there's a little blue tab on the far right now, or on the right of that, that's our work area. So if we want to manually move it, we could grab that little tab and stretch it out to wherever we want. If you go to the other side, you'll see there's another one that we could adjust that side to, okay? So just be aware of it because if your composition is two minutes long and you're focusing on this 10 seconds, you don't wanna be watching the entire two minutes just to see that 10 seconds, okay? So now when I hit play, you see that it just loops that one spot that I want to continuously see, all right? Good. So now we want this to happen a lot quicker. For the projector's sake, I'm gonna make mine a lot darker or brighter so you can see it. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift Y. I'm gonna click on my color. You don't need to do this. Easier to see, okay. Um, so now I need to make my animation happen faster. How do I make that happen faster? Easy ease, right? So I have to grab my keyframes and then I'm going to hit F9 or I'm going to right click and go to Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. Okay, when you right click, make sure you right click right on the keyframe. Uh, if you do it out here, you get different options. Right on the keyframe, you get the keyframe assistant stuff. Okay. So now it's gonna go faster. All right, it's going a little bit faster. When we're dealing with 10 frames, that speed is not gonna be tremendously affected by easy ease, okay? If I had three frames, um, it doesn't matter what I do with my animation, there's only three spots. I have my beginning, I have my end, and I have my middle. Those are the only three spots that it has. So I don't really have a whole lot of room to tweak stuff, all right? So I want this to still happen faster because it's still happening maybe a little bit too slow for my liking. <clears throat> so I'm gonna make sure I click on the word position 
And then right here, that's the um, graph editor. Click on the graph editor. Okay, now that should swap you to some graph that looks like this, okay? We're seeing a red and a green. What do you think the red and the green mean? Nope, it's Christmas colors. <laughs> no. The um, red is the X direction and the green is the Y direction, okay? Now, if we got a Z, remember that's the depth, right? That would be blue, okay? If I had red, green, and blue, do those three colors mean anything to you? No? One. RGB, right? That's the color of your screen. When we're looking at the screen, those colors are RGB. And they've done this purposefully, so that's easy to remember. So RGB, you never would say BGR, right? Or BRG, it's always RGB. So in the alphabet, X, Y, Z, R, G, B, they coincide with each other. So red and X are always together, green and yellow are always together, and blue and Z are always together. Okay, so whenever you see in a graph red and green, you know that that's going to be X and Y. If it was gray, that would be a different item. Okay, but that was a good guess. Um, now these here um, are showing us each individual graph. For today, we don't care about each individual graph. I just want to make this whole thing go faster, okay? So I'm going to right click in the graph and change this to a speed graph. And then I should get a big hill, okay? What we want to do is make this thing go faster overall. So this is basically, there's some acceleration happening. It's going slower here, faster, and then it goes faster again okay or slows down again okay so in the middle it's the fastest wherever it's the highest that's where the speed is the most so what I want to do is push that to either one side or the other I don't want it to be evenly distributed I either want this to do this so it comes down slow and then slams down or I want it to go fast and then slow down at the end okay so there's two ways that we can do this right now it's just doing this and then slowing down. So it goes slow, really fast, and then slow again. I want to either go slow at the beginning and then fast, or fast at the beginning and then slow. I actually like these slow and then fast, um, slow and then fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on my little dot here, okay, there's a little dot, and then I'm gonna drag the little handlebar, okay? So I'm just gonna drag this to the right. Don't drag it up or down, just drag it to the right. Then I'm going to grab the other little handlebar and drag that to the right. It's already amazing. Okay. Now we need to take it to the next step. We do have a page transition, right? We started off with nothing and we went to a different color. So now we could add another animation on top of that if we wanted to, birds flying or whatever. Okay. But I want to have something more interesting because this is still kind of boring. So. Graph editor goes away, we click the graph editor button. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one animation and I'm going to duplicate it and offset it, okay? So um, the OCD person in me wants even numbers. The animator in me wants odd numbers, okay? And that might sound weird, but it's true. I want um, five is typically a good number. Three is not enough, seven is too many, five is a perfect number. So I'm gonna duplicate this until I have five of these layers. And you don't even have to do the counting. After Effects will do the counting for you. See how it says five right there? Control D, sorry. <laughs> Just click on the layer and hit Control D and it'll duplicate it. Okay, so we should have five copies now, right? All right, or four copies in the original. They're all independent. Yes. All right, now some people will actually have for their graph editor and their timeline, uh, we would talk about their dual screens. Some people will have those on the other screen just because it's a lot easier to manipulate. Here I'm kind of like condensed because I'm projecting it, but typically I do have my graph editor open on the other screen uh, or the, the timeline. That way this window can be a lot bigger. I can see everything much nicer. All right, so I need to offset each one of these items, okay? So remember we talked about 
we can take the end of a, a layer and we can change that trim point, right? Or we can move the entire layer. In this case, we want to move the entire layer, all right? So you're gonna go into the middle of this layer, not at the end of it where you see the double arrows, but right here in the regular spot. And you're just gonna move it over like two clicks. So like one, two, and then go to the next one, line it up and then move it over two more clicks. And then go to the next one, two clicks. And go to the next one, two clicks. I'm gonna go to my second layer. I'm gonna hit Control Shift Y and pretend this is my darker color. All I'm gonna do, and this is a neat feature if you have never seen this, if you just go to your brightness here, you can just slide this. I'm just gonna slide it up a little bit, hit OK. okay. Control Shift Y while you're selected on the layer. blocky, right? So how can we get rid of blocky disk? Motion blur. Right now we have zero motion blur. By default, After Effects puts no motion blur on your stuff because it weighs your station down. It takes more processing power and moves stuff slower. So it's a two-step process. We have to tell After Effects, number one, which layers we want to have motion blur, and then two, we want to see the motion blur, okay? So for each one of these layers, do you see how there's this little like circle icon right there in the middle, it looks like a circle and then like some ghosted circles behind it. That's motion blur, okay? So if I just click and drag straight down the line, it'll turn it on for those. Okay, now that tells After Effects that when motion blur is activated to motion blur these layers. Sometimes you don't want motion blur to happen. Sometimes you do. So for this specific thing, we want all the layers to motion blur. So we've turned them all on. Now this button here says actually enable it and let me see it. <clears throat> if I wanted to, if I didn't like the way this looked, okay, I could very easily just delete these layers again. Oops. Delete these layers again. Oh, that was right. I went the wrong way. Go back to my position, go back to my graph editor, move this around the other way. See how that looks, duplicate this so many times. And then change my colors again. Ugh, I'm in there. <laughs> Now it doesn't matter the order as far as like whether you offset them first or change the colors first. Um, I always just look at these little icons down here to see what I want. Color there. Something darker. And now I'm back. You see that literally took me like what? Not even a minute to delete that animation out, change how the animation looks, and then just reduplicate and re-offset colors, okay? Eventually we'll get into creating more of a universal color scheme where instead of using actual colors, we use grayscales and then we can manipulate those grayscales to pick a good color range. So we can change it from red to blue to green to whatever color we want within like an instant. Um, so this is where you need to start looking at things and trying stuff out, okay? Um, today, we're gonna be ending. This is where we're gonna stop today. When we come in Monday, we're gonna continue on this and we're gonna create different ones. This is just animating what property? What do we animate to get this to happen? Position, right? We just moved it down. We still have opacity, we still have rotation, we still have scale, and then we still have ways that we can animate these together. So I may want one that um, 
scale or scales up and then rotates into place and then scales up again or something like that okay there's a trillion combinations that we could do with this um, type of thing for the weekend you guys are doing your sketches 15 minutes yes cool uh, for the weekend I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to look up page transitions okay and you may have to type in after effects also <clears throat> and what you're gonna find are these so people will uh, they have free ones but they pay you people like charge for like bundles of these things but people just want to have some quick transitions but these are all doing the exact same thing that we just did.